Okay, I know you've been waiting some time for this video, so let's just jump straight in. This is going to be a full quarterly update of what's going on with me. Um, will 2025 be a better year for solar? Well, last year I exported £835. I'm confident we can do better in 2025. A quick reminder of my setup. I've got six 430 watt panels. They're facing southeast. I've got 16 430 watt panels and they are facing northwest. I've got a Sunsync 8.8 .8 kilowatt inverter. I've got no home storage battery. I've got a Valent 7 kilowatt heat pump system and I've got an MG5 electric car. So we are fully electric. And I know that I still owe you a couple of videos about battery calculations and whether they're necessary or not, but I'm going to try and be ambitious today. I'm going to try and get through three months worth of solar data to get you guys up to speed because I know I've been away for a little bit. So quick overview of what we've exported so far. Fairly low numbers here in January, 15 kilowatts, only £2.38, 69 kilowatts, £10. 419 kilowatts in March, which is very good, 62 pounds export. And to reminder, I'm on the Octopus fixed export tariff, which pays me 15p per unit per kilowatt hour. Um, on the import side of things, in January, you can see we imported quite a lot of energy, 1,217 kilowatts, kilowatt hours at a cost of 189 pounds. Uh, 980 in February, a cost of 136 pounds. And in March, we imported just 785 at 98 pounds and that brings us the average import rate 15.5 you can see i was having to use more peak rate energy because i don't have a home storage battery and then 13.9p because i was able to rely a little bit more on solar and less uh, peak usage and then down to 12.5 pence in march so it is coming down month on month and i expect that to continue uh, quite significantly into april actually Actually. Okay, so once again, this shows my generation versus my forecast. Uh, the blue bars are what this solar, what my solar panel system was forecasted to generate. The uh, purple bars, or whatever colour they are on your display, um, maybe slightly maroon. Actually, that, that's what we are achieving in 2025, and orange bars were what we achieved in 2024. And as you can see. Every month so far in 2025, we are up on where we should be and where we were last year and considerably in March. That is a significant uptick. That's not just within standard deviation or, you know, margin of error or any other way of uh, framing it. That is a significant, uh, very good result for March. So I'm very happy with that. And so far, looking at the forecast for April, it looks like we should be on for quite a strong April. And if the first two days are anything to go by, oh, yeah, bring it on. This one shows my export, and this just goes to show that last year, my export in February, it was higher than it was this year. And that's strange because we generated more energy, but we exported less. So it must be going somewhere, and maybe we'll find that out throughout the rest of the slides. In um, March, of course, we exported over 100 kilowatt hours extra compared to last year in 2024. All right. So this one shows the import uh, difference between 2024 and 2025. Orange is 2025 bars and that maroony purpley color in 2024. And as you can see, we are importing a lot more energy this year. And the only thing that has changed, because we did have the heat pump, for the full uh, period of 2024 but we do now have an electric car so let's try and dial down into some of the figures thank you to you who are loyal subscribers and watch these videos it's really brilliant to see your support and it's good to see that it is helping people demystify the kind of electrification and maybe instill a little bit of confidence that you too can do this it will reduce your bills it will improve your comfort it's well worth doing basically um, heat pump consumption 
this is where I kind of want to start, um, but I'm going to make a video dedicated to what we've done with our heat pump this winter because it's completely different to how we ran the heat pump last winter. And there's some pros and some cons to, to what we found. But as you can see, heat pump electrical consumption we want to look at first, which is the two lower bars. So in blue is the electrical consumption for 2024 and then yellow 2025. And um, what we're looking at is that 2025, we used more electricity, but we generated less heat. So our heat pump was less efficient because of the way we were running it. But we were trying to use more of our off-peak rate, whereas last year we basically had flat rate. We were on the Octopus Tracker Tariff. It was the same rate for every part of the day. So we were able to get the very best very best efficiency from the heat pump but not necessarily the lower lowest running costs so this year we have achieved lower running costs than last year but worse efficiency and you can see that that pattern pretty much continues for every single one of the months um, it's only actually in february that we produce more heat um, i should have actually looked at the average temperatures that would probably be because of this february being colder than the previous february and i'm guessing we produced we generated less heat in march and in january because i presume that those months were warmer and that's why we would have needed to generate less heat energy into the building um, but ultimately our cop is lower our running costs are higher um, as i said i will break this down in more detail of how we've achieved that and how I've been measuring that in a further video. But this just goes to show the overall running costs of my heat pump um, and I'll show in my video. It's 140 square meter, four bed detached house that we live in um, with a, a massive slab of glass on the back of the house, which doesn't help our heat loss. Um, 731 kilowatt hours of electrical consumption and these are the pessimistic numbers actually of what this costs i've just worked this out based on our average cost of electricity for the month in actual fact because we kind of overdrive the heat pump in the off-peak period and we heat our hot water in the off-peak period those kind of strenuous bits realistically the heat pump actually cost us less to run than this and not to mention whatever solar energy as well that has been used into this but this is kind of a worst case situation the worst case scenario um, if we really wanted to we could reduce the cost of this by nitpicking and actually going through the data from my smart meter and messing around with spreadsheets but i haven't got the time for that or the uh, patience um, here's a little insight um, shows that our cop for this period so far 2025 is down to 3.3 and this time last year i believe it was 3.8 so you can see we've lost 50 percent efficiency by running our schedule like this oh you can't quite see because of my head that shows that we are heating the property to 19 degrees between midnight and 4 a.m so we basically we let it cool off so that we can actually sleep let it drop down a little bit but for the rest of the time we are running it nice and comfortable and actually this winter we've averaged 0.8 degrees warmer than the previous winter that's our internal air temperature so it's definitely been warmer i've noticed it and uh, it's a few times i've felt a little bit too warm so that leaves us now with the other discrepancy which is now we have an electric vehicle so this is one of the pages from my wall box portal which i love the wall box portal by the way it's it's just very helpful it's got loads of information you can really make it show you whatever you want you can see january and february use pretty much the same energy uh, kilowatt hours a little bit less in march and if we go on to the next screen that goes to show us uh, how much that cost all of that over a megawatt hour it was 71 pounds once again that's because of octopus energy if you follow my link in the description then we both share 50 pounds each i'm on the intelligent octopus go tariff because my wall box charger supports it so it's not tied to my vehicle any vehicle can charge on my wall box and it will work with intelligent go um as you can see we used a fair bit of energy considering we didn't have an electric vehicle last year so there's really the difference so here this was popular towards the end of last year people loved that i put this little extra slide in um pause it 
analyze it yourself. Uh, I'm not going to go through this in detail, just to point out a couple of things. Uh, the slice of the pie for solar is pretty small at this time time of year. Reminder that the lion's share of my panels are on a northwest roof and they don't really come into their own. Or they are just starting to come into their own now. Um, but for January and February, they do very very little they they supplement the supply a little bit but very little and then goes to show that the off-peak rate of the ev look how small the segment is for how much it costs me but actually it's responsible for 28 percent of the uh, consumption and that goes to show the benefit of having a very cheap tariff to charge your ev okay and Oh, I already said all of this. Brilliant. Anyway, there's a reminder for you. If you're not on Octopus Energy, I think they're great. I know there's other uh, options out there like Tomato Energy and some of these look appealing. Um, as we know now, Tomato Energy are in some sort of trouble. We don't know exactly what is going on there. And there's a lot of rumors and hearsay about them not paying their bills and not paying what they owe. Um I don't know. Don't need to speculate on that. I like not only Octopus's prices and I like everything they stand for and that they are pushing for things to change like uh, regional pricing and looking at the models around how energy is supplied that ultimately should benefit everyone. In my previous video, I did talk about return on investment on these solar panels. I'm not going to recap any of that. Go back and look at the last video and you can see more detail. And just to round out, thank you once again to all my channel members, my Waffle members. I can't even move my floating head. I'm so rusty at this. It's been a while, guys. Um, I haven't really explained much on the channel. I've had to put a lot of time and effort into work since the start of January. I've also been pretty unwell and uh, my health has been quite a challenge to even keep up with my work responsibilities and family life and stuff, let alone trying to do YouTube videos on top. So I know that the content has been very thin. Thank you for my channel members for continuing to support me. And I hope now that I'm just finally starting to feel a little bit better after a few months of uh, feeling quite under the weather that hopefully I'll get a bit more energy and enthusiasm back because I have got a massive list of content ideas and videos that I want to make and things that I want to share with you um, but I just haven't had the energy and spent too many days in bed. Thank you for watching, enough of my ranting, goodbye, tune in for another one in the future.